Tinubu under pressure as Chief of Staff Gwaja Biamila is indicted in corruption probe of ex-Central Bank Governor Emefiele, Amcom boss and Kuru. <laughs> now wow. So apart from the issue of Beta Edu that is European Gwaja Biamila, he's now been indicted in another case with the CBN uh, probe that is currently ongoing by the Obaze group. <laughs> now wow. This man, it looks like corruption is his second name. But again, will Tinubu be bold enough to get this man off his cabinet and get someone else? I don't think so. Only God knows the, what is binding both of them. But let's get into the details. Sources told Sahara reporters on Monday that Gwede Bamila was fingered as one of the beneficiaries of the largest of corruption uncovered under Ahmed Kuru. The chief executive officer of the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCOM, and the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele. Oh boy, President Bola Tinubu is currently under pressure over his chief of staff, Femi Bedabi Amila's alleged involvement in corruption. Sources told Sarah reporters on Monday that Bedabi Amila was fingered as one of the beneficiaries of the largest of corruption uncovered under. Ahmed Kuru, the chief executive officer of AMCON, and the former governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele. The special investigator, Jim Obaze's report exposed how Bajabi Amila benefited from Ahmed Kuru's largest of Ikoyi properties from his days as Speaker of the House of Representatives, according to top sources in the presidency. So one of the Sources told Sarah reporters that Baja Bamila, in return, had ensured Kuru remained as AMCON's chief executive after about nine years. Already, fresh information has emerged about how Godin Emefiele and Ahmed Kuru, the AMCON CEO, conspired in gross abuse of office to acquire banks of choice using public funds to fraudulently take over Polaris Bank, Keystone Bank, and Union Bank. Can you imagine? Sarah reporters obtained a special investigator's report on the probe of MFLA, which uncovered the alarming sums of money, sums of public funds, which went into the fraudulent acquisition of the banks under MFLA and AMCON under Kuru's leadership. Sahara reporters on January 10 reported that the Central Bank of Nigeria dissolved the board and management of the Titan Trust Bank, Union Bank, Polaris Bank, and Keystone Bank. This followed a report submitted to President Bola Tinubu by the Special Investigator on the Central Bank of Nigeria and related entire entities, Jim Obaze. So it was reported that the decision to dissolve the boards was mm -hmm. taken after a meeting between the CBN Governor Yemi Kadoso Obaze and the boards of the four banks, including Titan Trust investors, who had earlier avoided meeting with the Special Investigator. Sarah reporters reported in December 2023 that the office of the special investigator had insisted that the chairman of Titan Trust Bank, TTB, Mr. Tunde Lemon, Mr. Cornelius Vink, and Roll Savara uh, must appear before it over the acquisition of the Union Bank of Nigeria. Meanwhile, on Monday, Sarah reporters learned that Obaze's investigation uncovered a scheme by MFLA and Ahmed Kuru. Um, that placed 20 billion naira investment in Heritage Bank sometime in 2017, upon which the bank granted a loan of 25 billion naira to the Sigma Golf Consortium of MFLA, Kuru, Abu Funtoa, Asega Alega, with Omaru Modibo as front to acquire Keystone Bank. Oh boy. This is for the TFO. This people, the TFO. What is this? That this, these people, they are something else. I'm telling you. They, they are just ripping up this country. Meanwhile, people are just simply moving around. They don't even know what is happening. This is serious. Independent financial investigations revealed that Ahmed Kuru threw all orders under the bus to save his neck by blackmailing all government officials who had benefited from his generosity through the sharing of Ikoyi and Abuja properties. A forensic observer noted that the special invest investigator's report 
that did not indict Kuru raised concerns over whether it was deliberate as a result of a bargain. President Bola Tinubu is under pressure from some political associates whom Kuru has soiled their white robes, including the Honorable Femi Gwaja Jamila, President's Chief of Staff, who has benefited from Ahmed Kuru's largest of Ikoyi properties from his days as Speaker of the House of Representatives, a source in the Asorok told. So the source noted that Gwaja has persistently blocked Ahmed Kuru's removal as AMCON's Chief Executive uh, after about nine years in office over two terms of a democratically elected president. So an independent investigator shared, sharing an opinion in, indicated that uh, it is clear that the only organ of government that has resources for criminal and forensic investigation of economic uh, and forensic investigation of economic and financial crimes is the EFCC. So the Jim Obazer Special Investigating Team has only managed to point to areas of infractions, but has not succeeded in forensic tracing and following of the money. So it can only be strategic that the government hand that hand all cases over to the EFCC, remove Ahmed Kuru from the office, and switch around a few directors in the central bank who, without doubt, may be complicit with the government MFLA in this criminal conduct. Otherwise, with those actors in position, they will continue to obstruct the investigation. You can see the limitations of presidential special investigations investigators in the CBN establishment. Otherwise, the Yemi Kadoso, incumbent CBN governor, will remain in an invisible world hostage environment of MFLS network in the CBN. As Agbaja has surrounded the president with whispers of half-truths. <laughs> Efforts to reach Gwaja Bamila and Kuru failed as they did not answer their calls or reply the test messages sent to their mobile lines. That is Nigeria for you. Oh boy. So I think they have to pay. They have, in fact, if Tinubu can complete this job, then <laughs> that would be a great one. But he, what if Tinubu's hand is not even clean in this matter? Because if Gwaja, Gwaja has been working for Tinubu over the years, so all those sharing of Ikoi and Abuja properties, I don't think the noble hand will, will, not, will be free completely. Hmm. Someone said, this man again, home and abroad. <laughs> but that Mamela is corrupt, home and abroad. Uh, corruption is all over him, including the 3 billion Naira deal with the Betaidu and bribe for forward names for appointments. All of those things. Stealing and stealing. This Baja is... It must be a born corrupt man from the womb. This Baja will ultimately embarrass Tinubu's government as he is frequently on the side of wrong news of corruption. A man can deny God for position. Ah, it's dangerous. Hmm. This Baja, eh? anyone indicted by a special investigation of President Bola Tinubu administration must be made to face the long arm of the law of corruption. Okay, oh. Baja has done nothing. They want to destroy Tinubu. Mm -hmm. Remove Baja, you have removed Tinubu's greatest loyalist. That is the reason Tinubu will never touch him. That is it. That guy is automatic. In fact, he's, he's a de facto president. That is what he is. That is what he is. Baja Bamila has to go because he shields many corrupt leaders due to his position. Allowing such people in the corridor of power is a great mistake. As if at all, Tinubu is really serious about his renewed hope agenda, Baja has to go. <laughs> this president cannot do anything to Baja and co. Please expect to hear more. Okay. Oh. So that is what is happening to Baja Biamila. Uh, there's pressure now to get him off Tinubu's cabinet. And there are more heads to rule because the kind of corruption that they are uncovering on issue of amcon and the uh, cbn is is jaw breaking every day people are devising ways to steal go help this country so thank you for listening and uh, let's have your comment for sharing